Okay, in a previous tutorial, uh, we created an IMG file, an image file, uh, using uh, QMU. And uh, we uh, basically uh, created an image file, and we partitioned it, and we installed a copy of Slitaz to it, a very lightweight Linux distro. So let me list out the files we have here. We have the ISO file, which is the live CD of Slitaz that I downloaded and uh, the IMG file that I uh, created and installed it to. If you remember when we created it, we created it as a one gig file. So even though it's not full, it still takes up one gig of space. It's been allocated for that amount of uh, data. So now what I want to do, there's a lot of different things we can do with this, is I want to uh, mount that IMG file and chur root into it or change root. Uh, and basically what this does is uh, chur root will make anything you do within the terminal that you start to root in think that you're running off of the mounted uh, image file. So if I try running a program like uh, a shell bash, it won't run bash off of my host machine, which is running mint. It'll run it off Slitaz. If I try starting up uh, nmap or any other program, it will try to run it from Slitaz image if it's installed. Um, this is uh, a very uh, useful tool in many cases. Uh, lots of times uh, it's used to manipulate images if you're creating a distro without uh, having to boot into a distro. You can go right in the IMG file, uh, make some changes, and it's saved to the IMG file just as if you had booted into it. Um, another example of this being used is on devices such as uh, my Nokia N900 cell phone, which is running uh, uh, MAMO, but I have Debian installed using a chur root. Um, so basically I can run any Debian program without having to dual boot into Debian. Um, this is very convenient. You don't have to reboot at all to get it to work. And it doesn't use up as much system resources as a virtual machine would. I've talked enough. Let's dive into the tutorial. First thing we need to do is mount this IMG file. Uh, I have an empty directory under uh, MNT, so I would be mounting it to the mount directory. Um, and you would think that you would have to be sudo or root, obviously. And you would think you'd just be able to go mount... Uh, and you would say um, dash o loop and the name of the file such as img and where you want to mount it like so and you would think it would mount it after you type in your password but it doesn't it gives you an, uh, uh, an error telling you to specify the file system now I know that I create a x um, ext3 partition on this uh, image file but even if I tell it to do that, it's going to tell me that's the wrong file type. Now, why is this? Uh, well, the answer is um, the image is actually the whole hard drive image. We didn't just image a partition. Now, if you just imaged a partition, you wouldn't have this problem. In most cases, newer versions of mount will automatically detect the file system type and mount it. But since there's it could be different partitions in this image file, even though we only created one. Trying to mount it, we're trying to mount it basically from the master boot record, which we don't want. We want to mount it from the part of the image, which is the partition. So how do we find out where that partition starts? That's what we need to know. Well, we're going to use an application called Parted, which is installed on uh, many versions of Linux by default. Um, so we'll start that up by typing in parted and the name of our image file, which is slitaz.img in this case. So uh, parted is started up. Next, we're going to type in uh, unit. And then we're going to do a capital B for this part. Uh, I really haven't looked into what that all means. I'm just knowing that this is what I have to type to find this out. Next, we're going to type print, and it gives us all the information. It's telling us that within this image file, there's one partition. It's an ext partition. It's primary. And this is the important part right here, where it starts. That's what we need to know. So with that information, we can queue to get out of that. And now we can go back, and we can say sudo mount dash o loop. And then we're going to say comma offset. And this is where we tell it to offset a certain number of bytes. And we're going to say equals, and it's going to be this number right here, obviously without the B, which means bytes. Um, so we have that. Then the name of our image file. 
and where we want to mount it. Ta-da, no error message. Let's go to MNT, which was empty a second ago, and look, we have the mounted image file there. Now, any changes we make inside here are editing this image file. So it'd be editing that operating system, but we're not actually running within that operating system yet. This is where Chirrut comes into play. We're going to sudo, and we're going to Chirrut, and then we're going to give it a directory that I want to churr it into. So I'll just say forward slash MNT. Now we do get an error because it's trying to run bash within the MNT because that's the environment I'm running in right now. Well, that's not what we want to do. Uh, well, that would be what we want to do if bash was available in there, but it's not. Slitaz is very slimmed down. It doesn't have bash by default. It just has uh, the regular standard shell. So we'll do is forward slash bin forward slash sh. Now this will start up Chirrut working out of the mount directory and it'll start up the shell but not the shell on my current Linux Mint operating system but the shell within that IMG file. We'll hit enter and you can see I get a new prompt here. Let me clear out the screen and now we are working as root within that Slitaz operating system didn't have to reboot. It's not a virtual machine. It's not in a sandbox. We're just running it and it's going to use less system resources than a virtual machine because a virtual machine, you're going to say, well, we're going to give it this much RAM and you're going to load up the whole operating system and everything. This will use minimal, just what it needs. So right now it's using whatever process power it needs to run the chur root command, uh, which is probably, I guess, still running in the background and the shell. So it uses, right now we're using practically none of uh, our extra system resources because we're using such a little where if I had used a virtual machine, we'd be using a whole lot more. Now, uh, I can start um, doing stuff, but if I try to, and I'm going to show you, ping Google, you would think that I'd be connected, but I'm not. Uh, if I IF config, you can see that I do have my Ethernet card running here, and it is showing up. And by the way, when I'm running ping and IF config, they're all running from within Slitaz. If I try to run commands from my Linux Mint operating system within this uh, terminal here, they, they're not accessible right now. As far as this terminal is concerned, we are in Slitaz. I'm trying to just make that clear because it might be a little confusing for people who don't necessarily understand what's going on. Um, but you can see it looks like I already have an IP address, and that's because my master system does. Um, but we need to uh, refresh that. Now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, on many systems you have DHCP uh, client. Uh, Slitaz has a lighter weight uh, DHCP um, C for client. And then we're going to say ETHO. We'll hit enter, and it will refresh uh, that IP and get us basically our DNS for our Slitaz operating system. Now, if I uh, go back to my Linux Mint, everything's still working fine, but we now also have things working if I ping out Google within Slitaz. So real quick here, I'm going to kill that. And you'll see uh, if I try running Taz PKG, which is um, the package manager for Slitaz, uh, where in Ubuntu, Mint, or any Debian-based system, you'd have apt-get or aptitude or synaptic as a GUI interface. And what I'm going to tell it is I'm going to recharge. That's like reloading your list. It's going to grab, it, grab a list of all packages available for Slitaz from their servers. And now I'm going to quickly open up another terminal here. Now this terminal is our Linux Mint terminal. And if I type in nmap, you'll see nmap runs. It just brings up the help page because I didn't give it any parameters. But inside our Slitaz uh, terminal, if I type in nmap, it's not found. Why is it not found? Because it's not installed in Slitaz. So now I can use Taz PKG. Once again, that's the package manager for Slitaz. I can get dash install nmap and it will download and install and map in any of its um, dependencies. Now I can nmap within Slitaz, and that is saved to the image file. When I unmount that, I can now uh, run, remount that image file later, run it in a virtual machine, or DD it over to an actual physical hard drive, and nmap will be installed on Slitaz when we boot it up. Now let's install something else here. We'll say Taz PKG, oops, PKG, and we'll get install, it should be get dash install. 
xorg dash x clock, which is a GUI little clock. Uh, let me show you here. If I start this up in my Linux Mint environment, uh, I'll say, oops, not clipboard clock. It is this clock right here, which is on most systems by default if you have Xorg installed. Slitez doesn't have it by default, once again, because it's very lightweight. Now, if I try to run that within the Slitez environment, let's see what happens. We get an error. It can't open a display because we haven't set up a visual display for our Slitez environment. Everything running in here right now is running from the command line. So how do we get GUI applications or even a full desktop running within a true environment? Well, that is what we're going to go over in our next tutorial. So stay tuned. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I thank you for watching. Visit the links in the description as well as our Facebook page. Give us a like over there and watch all the video tutorials that I have. I have almost a thousand. We're coming up on a thousand tutorials tutorials or a thousand videos I have up, most of which are tutorials. So keep on watching and our next little video here on working with IMG files, image files, will be on uh, churooting with a GUI interface and there's different ways you can do it depending on exactly what you're trying to accomplish. So once again, thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.